Hi, Scott Tipton. I wanted to be able to give you an update on some of the issues that we've been working on this week. I'd like to begin actually at home. We just recently heard that there was a ruling by a judge in regards to the Colorado mine. We're seeing real impacts and attacks that are going against the coal industry in Colorado. Recently, we've lost 500 plus jobs down in Delta and Gunnison counties. We're now seeing that extended up into Moffat County as well. I'd invite anyone to be able to travel with me if you want to be able to see blue skies and coal-fired power plants to come up to Craig, Colorado, an area that is now being impacted by this judge's decision. We are leading a letter. Uh, we're working with our senators as well as state representatives in the state of Colorado to encourage Secretary Jewell to understand the economic impact not only on the miners and their families, but also on our senior citizens and young families that have fixed incomes, essentially, and how that's going to be impacting their energy bills. This is something that we're going to be paying close attention to, and we encourage all of you to get a hold of our office and to be able to address this issue with us as well. We've also had the opportunity to be able to address something that's impacting not only our farm and ranch community, but our greater communities as well. That's in regards to the potential listing of the sage grouse in the state of Colorado. Under the current proposals that are coming out, the state of Colorado is going to be joined with 10 other states in terms of broad designation of the sage grass. I don't believe that we can overstate the potential impacts to jobs, to our economy, and basically private property rights as well that must be addressed. Pleased to be able to report to you that under the NDAA bill, which just passed, that we were able to support an amendment that was offered by Chairman Bishop out of the Natural Resources Committee to be able to prohibit this listing and to do something that I feel is very important, to cede that power back to our state, back to our local communities, back to farmers, ranchers, people who are taking conservation processes right now that are actually showing very positive results. We look forward to this bill now moving over to the United States Senate and we hope that they will concur with the entire bill to be able to move this forward. It's great protections actually for so many elements of our community. We also have another issue that I know very many of you are concerned about and that we've been working on during the time that I've been privileged to be able to represent the 3rd Congressional District of Colorado. That's being able to protect our water. We've seen multiple attacks coming out of Washington, D.C., starting with blue ways, which then transformed in uh, to navigable waters and then transformed into the waters of the U.S. I'm pleased that in this Congress and just this week that we were able to pass House Bill H.R. 1732, uh, the Regulatory Integrity Protection Act. What this act will do will prohibit implementation of the waters of the U.S. This is something that we're doing very well actually at home in terms of dealing with water issues and protecting our state law as well. This is going to be complemented by our piece of legislation, the Protecting Our Water Rights Act, to prohibit the federal government as a means of taking water by conditional use of permit uh, to be able to protect those water rights in our state. We have great state law dealing with water. We also have a priority-based system. Perhaps most importantly, it is also a private property right in the West, which we must be able to protect. We're seeing multi-tiered action by the federal government trying to be able to get control of this water. And we're very intent on protecting those private property rights, our priority system, and our state law as well. I was very privileged really to be able to be in Pueblo this past week. And we were able to hold a business roundtable that was hosted by the Latino Chamber of Commerce brought together people in the financial industry at the local level. People that wanted to be able to provide access to capital to be able to help businesses not only preserve the jobs that they have, but to be able to create new jobs as well. The lesson that we learned from that round table is something that we hear echoed throughout the entire 3rd Congressional District. It's about jobs in the economy. While there may be po pockets of prosperity throughout the state of Colorado, they're primarily just in the metro region. As we move out into rural Colorado, we're still seeing that communities are struggling, businesses are having a tough time. Recent indications and reports have indicated that for the first time since we've been keeping records in the United States, we now have more small businesses shutting down than there are new business startups. We're seeing $2 trillion in regulatory costs, which are being suffer, su impacting our small businesses and their opportunity to be able to create those jobs. This is great information for us that came out of the roundtable to stay focused on eliminating unnecessary regulations 
There isn't one of us that believes we need to eliminate all regulations, but a sensible approach to regulations, making sure that they're working to the common good and that we're creating those jobs and being able to get our communities to be able to prosper is something that we are very focused on. One area that is also going to be impacting jobs in the state of Colorado and to a large major in our agricultural industry is going to be being, having the opportunity to be able to export. We're going to be having legislation come before the House of Representatives this coming week in regards to the Trade Promotion Authority. Now there are two pieces that need to be addressed, the Trade Promotion Authority and then a second piece of legislation called the TPP or the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The TPA is something that's going to allow Congress to actually be involved in those trade negotiations so that we can all take a look at it. You're going to be able to examine what that trade agreement would be able to look like and to make sure it's in the best interest of our companies, our businesses, of the United States and the opportunity to be able to create jobs. I think that that is a positive step forward to make sure that we have absolute clarity and transparency on this issue then that determines what will happen on the Trans-Pacific Partnership or the TPP bill. We're about creating jobs and making sure that we've got prosperity in our communities and something that we're going to continue to work on and we certainly invite you to share your thoughts and your opinions on these variety of issues that we're dealing with in Washington and as always feel free to reach out to our offices in Grand Junction, Durango, and Alamosa and Pueblo and to our Washington office as well. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks so much.